Hello, everybody. Hope you can hear me. Clarita, hi. See your message there. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is John LeDrew. We are uh, going to um, talk about digital printing today. Looks like um, I'm actually talking to myself. There's no viewers. Oh, there's one. Hi. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about uh, digital printing. We're going to talk about uh, the Roland uh, print cut application that you can um, bring into your business, how that works, um, what kind of questions you guys have about how uh, solvent printing is a good addition to your business. Uh, we're going to talk about direct-to-garment, how direct-to-garment printers um, also make a lot of sense to add to your business. What I really like about adding digital printing to your – good morning, uh, good morning, Maxine. Thanks for joining. Um, what I really like about adding digital applications to your embroidery business um, is you can um, really diversify your offerings. Um, morning, Mary Lou. Um, you can diversify your offerings and you can create uh, just more product to offer your and you, to offer your customers. Um, I came from a production background where I started my own shop uh, in the early 2000s uh, with just a little screen printing. Um, I got into leather work. I ended up doing skateboard stuff. Um, and then I got hired by a company that did large, um, big production runs for a uh, um, lot of like Target, Walmart, um, uh, Hot Topic, Macy's, Kohl's, Kmart, um, just uh, a t MTV type stuff. We got into licensing. We did a lot of stuff. Hi, Danzy. Nice, nice to uh, see you there. Thanks for joining. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm familiar with what you guys are experiencing. Um, uh, I, I know what it's like to, to run a production shop. I know what it, it's like to, to sell, a, to sell, um, to sell product and how tough it can be to get some of those customers, um, and to keep those customers. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, um, with digital stuff. Um, before I worked with Melco, I was doing professional sports licensing. Um, so I worked for the Nuggets Avalanche organization and I managed their whole, um, apparel line and that, and that was fun because we got to create a lot of content, but it also gave me a lot of insight on how to reach out to and, um, kind of connect with higher end potential customers, which, I, which I want to talk to you a little bit about today as well. Um, so if you have any questions, feel, feel free to throw them in the comments. I'll get to them for sure. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, we're talking a little bit about mixed media. Just to recap, we're talking about how to incorporate uh, digital printing into your uh, production shop. So as you all know, embroidery has its own challenges. Um, embroidery has its own, its own facet and an embroidery business is a great way to start in the, in the, in the world of, uh, de garment decoration. Um, you could start with a vinyl printer. You could start with a, uh, a direct to garment printer. You could start with a solvent printer, but if you're starting with embroidery, that's a, that's a really solid, high quality, um, uh, baseline. And, what I like about these digital applications is, um, oh, hi, Diana, again, from Kalispell. Yeah, my brother, my buddy lives in uh, Whitefish, so we go up there quite a bit and do a little fishing up there. And, um, but, yeah, nice to see you. Um, so um, adding digital, um, okay, for, first let's talk about how I like and what I, the thing, some of the things that I did to get new customers um, and try to uh, just bring attention to my shop. Um, the first thing is register your business with Google. If you if you haven't already, um, register your business, your name, your location. Get yourself on Google Maps. Because um, when I start when I search for something, um, right now I'm um, I'm into all sorts of crazy stuff. But recently I've been um, wanting to make i've been making um moonshine <laughs> so uh i've been kind of trying to figure out how to make moonshine about myself but still but where do i get the grains where do i get all the stuff i just search google maps brewery supply store and the first thing that comes up that's where i go typically closest to me um or one with good reviews so i would say do the same if you haven't done that already make sure you register your name with google second make sure create a name for your business it can be a dba but create a name for your business that is relevant to what people would be searching for in your area. So if you're from Kalispell, um, maybe it's white fish embroidery and screen printing, white fish garment decoration, Kalispell personal, uh, personalization equipment.com. Okay. And that should be what basically your search term for what you think is most rel relatable to your business should be your business name or one of them. 
you can have still like uh, Diana's custom apparel. That could be your primary business name, but a DBA would be um, uh, Kalispell custom apparel or Montana custom screen printing or something like that. Okay. Um, Alpine textiles. That's a great, that's a great name as a, for a company for sure, but try to create another name that is uh that has a search engine uh, that would be a strong search engine name especially in this business if you're looking for car washes um you want Kalispell car wash right you're not going to find um i mean it, it's going to be it's going to be the easiest thing to find and search so that's just a thought um for increasing your seo content and getting your name um searchable for people who are looking for your product register with google get a url that relates to that search term put it, send it back to your website, your, um, Instagrams and Facebook and all that stuff could be your normal name. Um, in addition to the, uh, the, the search engine name, if you can somehow kind of just a thought, if you can somehow get all that together too, once you have a, a solid name that relates to your area, I would recommend, um, reaching out to creating, reaching out to all of the prospects in your area that you think would make good, uh, business partners. Reach out to the people, um, the con uh, construction companies, the landscaping companies, the breweries, the um, the school supply stores. Uh, I don't know what that is. The schools, cheerleaders, uh, football players, baseball teams, basketball teams, wrestling, um, uh, horse horse um, uh, like uh, arenas, um, uh, horse shows, um, farriers. I mean, there's a ton of different, obviously. Um, options out there what i would say is reach out to all these customers these people that you potentially want to work with and get their logo off their website find their logo from somewhere you can digitize it and embroider them with a sample really easy to just direct a garment print a sample for them um, and even easier to make stickers or mugs or something like that with the solvent printer um, you can also do die sub so you can make a quick die sub mug send it to them with a sticker in it and a little embroidered uh, like patch or something and say hey I'm uh, Alpine Embroidery, Alpine Textiles, and I would love to get your business. We have competitive pricing and really high quality results. You work with me directly, et cetera. So um, sell that service. Um, use your equipment that can do one-off type stuff quickly and easily. That's the benefit to this stuff as opposed to having a screen print set up where you'd have to burn screens, clean screens, wash screens, create art, separate art, um, register it, mix ink, set it up, align it, print it. Um, dry it break it all down clean the screen do the re-emulsion do the whole thing again it's a lot easier to just bring the artwork into uh um uh the versa works versa studio and press print and put it out print out a, a sticker so a um, really easy way to make custom quick samples with your one-off type equipment and that i want to highlight is one of the benefits to the equipment that we sell here at melco is it's designed to do quick turn one-off type stuff um, and a full customization in addition to larger volume. And that's one of the benefits you get with this technology nowadays is you can do the customer who wants five shirts, 10 shirts, um, as opposed to being limited to uh, large volume screen print operations. So take advantage of that. Um, reach out to those customers, go deliver it directly or put it in the mail. It's always nice to get something fun and unexpected in the mail. And I guarantee your customers, uh, the people who, uh, you send this stuff to will um, will will be impressed. Um, so I know it takes time, but that's prospecting one on one. That's the and and I think instead of just calling or emailing, hey, I'm from Alpine Textiles. Um, I'd love to get your business. Um, you don't have to explain anything now. You can simply create something quickly and easily, put it in the mail, and impress the heck out of them. So um, one thing to consider. Um, that was a really good way for us to get one of the, some of the biggest accounts I've ever gotten in my life, uh, was reaching out to all the sports teams because we are on the same level, Nuggets, Avalanche, whatever. I created a catalog. I created some samples. I sent catalog and samples to every sports team in the industry, um, uh, in the professional sports, hockey, basketball, and, uh, lacrosse and soccer. And we got massive amounts of accounts, people that didn't even know that we were doing what we were doing. And we had incredible content. Um, it, it was, it was simple just by doing that. Um, so I, and I, 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 I met actually a screen print shop in uh, California who that's how they, that's how they got all of their business. And this was before Google maps. They were, 
they were looking through like yellow pages basically i mean uh, but they were screen printing samples so even more complicated back then but um something something easy to do um for getting for getting a little bit more business um if you want me to elaborate on that a little bit further if you have any questions in particular feel free to drop them in the comments down below um did you bring any samples to show yes i do i um i do have samples um i can show you some samples of uh solvent or um solvent printing um i don't have a ton because my printer is waiting on um uh, cleaning solution. <laughs> uh, another thing, always keep up with supplies. <laughs> Don't run out of supplies, uh, especially for your digital printers. If you're, um, if you're used, if you've used the bulk of your white ink and you know, you're going to need more in the future, make, make sure you get it. I always make sure I have two white inks on hand, make sure I have plenty of pre-treat on hand. Um, if I'm starting to get low, you reorder, um, same for the solvent printer. However, this one slipped my mind. I have plenty of ink, um, stashed right here in front of me. Actually, I have plenty of ink. But I, um, and ink just trickles out of that thing. So I have way, way more ink than I'll need in the next year, but I forgot to get cleaning solution. So something to, uh, to keep in mind, I always have that stuff in inventory. But yes, I have some samples and we'll throw you some, throw you some stuff. Um, yeah, so let's talk about that. I think, I mean, that's, I think the main topic of this embroidery or of this live Q&A. Um, now that we have more people here, we can, let's, let's get to the, uh, to the, the, the um, the heart of this discussion, which is how to mix embroidery or what some of the things you can do to mix embroidery with digital applications. Um, and this is a, a fun subject. Um, it's really unique in that um, our laser alignment system with the embroidery machine makes it really very, very doable. Um, so let's yeah sublimation on polyester that's that's correct i mean that's really what sublimation is for so let's look at some samples here so this this was a um a, a, i created this design as a uh, kind of a high a high um kind of profile example of that glare is kind of bad of what we can do with embroidery and dye sublimation. So basically dye sublimation, the way it works is you're, you're printing on a piece of paper. This is my niece. You're printing on a piece of paper um, with, a dot, with a sublimation printer, and then you're putting it under the heat press, um, and letting the heat at, um, activate the gases in the ink. They will then remove, they will then, um, they will, as they turn to gases, they will adhere to the substrate. The substrate must have a polyester either coating or be 100% polyester. So you can do it on you can do it on t-shirts. You can do it on a sublimated coated or a polyester coated fabric. Let me show you something here. Um, I have some samples here. So this is a ceramic mug that is sublimated. Oh, going the wrong way. That's me, the tall guy. Uh, when I graduated fire academy, <laughs> yeah. So sublimated mug, really cool, really easy to do. This has polyester on it. Um, banners, polyester, polyester uh, koozie, and now this is polyester twill. So this is white twill that we added that we used uh we dye sub with i created a design i dye sublimated it on this white twill that was white twill right here this inside was white twill this black part was white twill so when i sublimated this i sublimated that image um, on white twill then i take it to my cutter which is right here and i have essentially this artwork in garment creator or in um, illustrator has a cut contour line around it once i sublimated it um i put it i put it into my cutter added registration marks and i had those cut lines assigned in illustrator it then cut it out uh just following those those cut contour lines there's a laser eye on your cutter and it'll see those registration marks, it'll know exactly where to cut. You could cut this by hand, 
but that would be that would be challenging though it is done um once these letters are cut the cool thing about the embroidery machine is we would just essentially lay down a walk stitch hoop this thing lay down your walk stitch for this exact same art you used in illustrator you just create a walk stitch in um, design shop you set out your pattern uh you as you after it's hooped you lay it out you line it all up make sure it's good you set out your a pattern you set you set your walk stitch then you literally put each one of these letters in the spot on the walk stitch it has a little adhesive backing and then it'll stitch it to the fabric so the cool thing is you can use you don't need rolls and rolls and rolls of um of um twill of every color in the rainbow anymore you simply need one dye sublimation printer and one roll of white twill and you can create patterns, you can create any color you want. Now, the way we did this is this was just st standard applique, the letters, pretty straightforward. If you know how to do applique, if you don't know how to do applique, there's plenty of uh, instructions on the Melco websites um, or on our YouTube channel on how to do applique. But this is pretty complex, right? So we have, appears to be complex. We have embroidery in the middle, right in the middle of this sublimation, um, this applique. And the way we did that is using the laser alignment tool in Design Shop, we picked two corners and I recall it being this corner here and this corner here. And once we had this thing hooped, once we had this walk stitch set, we were able to then say, this is how we tell Design Shop, this is where this design is sitting in the, uh, relating to these two corners. Design Shop actually rotates and adjusts the design size or rotation to match exactly where it needs to land. So. We, I have about four or five of these um, hoodies that we have here at the office. All of them came out like they should. So it's not terribly complicated. We're going to do more content on that, like actual video content on that in the near future. Um, there is plenty on YouTube now, but we're going to try to make more concise content. But what the, really the point of this here is, uh, the point of this discussion is to let you know that this is very doable. The, the, the information out there to learn how to do it is available. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's really versatile and it's time consuming or it's time saving and, and money saving supply saving. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get a lot of good applique, um, uh, quality applique designs, colors, images, et cetera. Um, simplify things just by getting one dye sublimation printer, um, and, um, a roll of white twill. So you can use the Epson 570. You can use the Epson 6370. We like Epson here. Is great support, really high quality product, um, and it's really reliable. Um, it comes with easy to use software. Um, if there was a better solution out there, frankly, we would use it. Uh, but Epson really is is top notch when it comes to a number of things, the direct to garment, of course, and uh, dye sublimation. So I'm going to kind of get into some of the answers here. Uh, thanks, Clarita, for the firefighter support. I appreciate that. Um, you're welcome, uh, Gemzi, for uh, for doing this. Um, Gemsy asks, oh, which solvent printer do you have and does it print and cut or do you have a separate cutter? That's a great question. Um, I use the Roland um, SG and VG line. So the Roland has just released the three series. So SG3 and VG3. This is a SG series, which is the original. Then there's SG2, uh, which is now sold out. And the SG3 is coming, which we will have here shortly. So I like Roland. Number one reason, it's extremely simple um, and it's reliable. The machine just works, it runs, it stays registered. The software that comes with it couldn't be easier and it does exactly what you want. You think this is a complicated process, right? So I'm taking a design in Illustrator, I'm creating, I'm creating a cut line. Then I have to send it over to another software. Then it's gonna read that, read that image, it's gonna print it, and then it's gonna cut it out perfectly. Is that what you're telling me? It's that simple? Well, frankly, it is. Um, we, I've made a number of videos um, on, the YouTube, on our YouTube channel to, um, uh, I have a playlist specifically for roll and solvent print cut, and um, it is super versatile. Um, and I love that you can do banners, you can do decals, you can do um, uh, heat transfer material, um, you can do window clings. Uh, we have a ton of stuff. Let me show you a sample here of um, a solvent. So this is solvent transfer. This is a solvent heat transfer that was print and cut 
on boy that glare is horrendous is put print and cut on the roland salmon printer and then notice that embroidery marrow stitch around the edge that couldn't have been easier done with the um uh the laser alignment tool in garment creator i remember the two points were edge to edge it was uh this part of the line the these two points here and we even did this at a trade show where um, we hooked it hook hooped it crooked um and then as soon as you design designate those two points design shop sees that and it adjusts the art to match and then this this nice marrow stitch around the end really gave it that really so you have something that that's really high detail for a left chest and then we direct a garment printed the back so a lot of versatility here this is something that would otherwise be extremely difficult to do screen printing um and then just straight embroidery so if you were doing both a screen print job which high color high profile um really high quality print on the back that would take forever to screen print frankly even a good shop this takes six hours to to set up or more um and then something like this the detail in this left chest you would never get that uh, you'd never be able to preserve all that detail at this size with embroidery so that's why we love that solvent printer heat transfer capability with that left chest it makes it look like a professional patch right so let me get back into some questions i hope that helps answer um uh, yes, Diana has to be 100% polyester. You can use cotton. I've seen people doing that with dye sublimation, where they use cotton and they put a, uh, they put like a uh, coating on it. I, I'm not familiar with that though. Um, you could use, uh, Clarita. It looks like you're asking, could you use blends? Yes, you can use blends. The problem is, if you're not using 100% polyester, you're looking at washout potential. Um, yes. Have you used the homemade poly cotton? I have not, and I, I I'm unfamiliar with that. I the reason I don't is because I would just direct a garment print it if it's 100% cotton. Um, that that seems to be the mo make the most sense to me, because um, you can do light colors, dark colors, and if it's if it's blended, uh, just still direct a garment print it. Um, I'm interested this here. If if you find out how that works, please drop me a line. I'll put my email in here right now. You guys can reach out to me via email anytime. It's in, coming up in the comments now. How do you keep the sheen when dye subbing white twill? Uh, when I do it, I lose that nice shine uh, that the white has. Too hot. If you're if you're doing if if your heat press is too hot, um, you could potentially mute things out. So um, better solution with dye sublimation is more pressure more time less heat if you're seeing a lot of that um and just make sure you have your heat settings correct so look at the sub look at the twill material you're using look at the recommendation recommended times and temp settings um and pressure settings that's one thing that um that is what makes dye sublimation work you have to have a good heat press and you have to have those settings correct that's the big key and often the big problem with dye sublimation so I hope that answers your question. Um, Yo Mama 1375, great name. Uh, for the twill, do you recommend stalls on coated twill? Yes, that's what we like. Um, Clarita, um, seem single hooping for the fire rescue hoodie. Great job, thank you. And um, yes on one of them, no on a few others. So we, would, we did uh, just the rescue on one of them. I did it so huge here. <laughs> Let me show you this jacket. <laughs> it's so ridiculously big that even Scott was like, "Wow, you are really pushing the limits here." So this jacket back, this is a this is a Carhartt jacket, and the the back is huge, right? I mean, there I don't think there's any no embroidery machine that I'm aware of that can do anything this big. Um, so we just did rescue on its own, hooped that, and then um, and then did fire and the middle part. So two hoopings. Uh, but then we made a few that were smaller, small enough that you could get it in one hoop. And it still looks good. In fact, this is overkill. I haven't even seen really how this ridiculous this is. It's I like big. I think bigger is better um, in most most cases. But sometimes it's so big that it, it it's actually like distracts from the quality of the or the purpose of the design. Looking at this on, uh, you guys be the judge. 
Is that too big? <laughs> maybe it's cool. I think it's cool. I mean, I, I maybe it's good. Chancho saw me put the jacket on, and he's like, "All right, we're we leaving now." No, buddy, we're just getting started. So yeah, that's that's a really good question. Um, and you would think it would add complication. It doesn't really add complication. It just just adds time. So good question. Um, uh, Diana. I understand that white fabric is the best. What do you think about the artist that uses Clorox bleach out the center of a brightly colored t-shirt? That is awesome. So that's the type of creativity that I love about this industry. You come up with solutions um, that could be trendy. Um, we have to be creative and that's, that is a great way um, to, to be creative in this. In, in, I mean, I've seen people um, just use white shirts, print, and then tie dye as well. So there's a lot of, a lot of ways to do that. I think that's a great idea. I'd love to see some product. I'd love to see some samples. If you do that, uh, please send it to me. Show me what you, what you've done. I think that would be very cool. Um, yes, the Roland does cut fabric. And the, the nice thing about this cutter um, is it's, it's, it printer cutter. It's not just a printer. It's not just a cutter. Uh, it works independently as either one, or it can do both. Um, that was from, uh, um, from Danzy cutter. Um, so let me show you something quickly. There are a number of different types of blades and angles. So you, um, these are 45 degree blades. Um, they make 60 degree angled blades. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to open this to show you, but the blade angle, uh, if that's 90, the, the more the angle, the blade, the more uh, the, the different applications that it would be used for. So a 60 degree blade is really what you'd use for thicker material, thicker fabric like twill. So it cuts twill perfectly. You just adjust the pressure settings a little bit. You don't want to do it too much because you could potentially mess with the cut strip um, in, the, in the printer. Um, I have a video on how to perf cut. So I would watch that video. It's really good. It kind of helps you give, gives you a little bit of understanding on, on how to cut thicker material or how to cut a little bit deeper into material um and we'll cut some twill and stuff in some upcoming videos but um there is some stuff already out there so yeah great great question that's why i like that printer because it is so versatile yes clarita dtf so um that is on the docket of things to discuss i have some dtf here what i like about dtf let me show you some samples um is So notice, remember on this design, let me see if I can adjust this glare a little. Remember on this design, this was heat transfer material. So this is done on the Roland printer. That's just vinyl that has been print and cut to whatever whatever I whatever shape I designate. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, whatever shape I designate. Now I can do that on my solvent printer and it's got a plastic kind of transfer feel. It's not breathable. It, it works. It does the job. I think it looks great for most applications. However, we can do this now. Same thing on the direct to garment printer. So this is basically the same art. I just changed it to not my actual old department, but, um, and I made this Puget Sound fire department logo based off the original logo. So this is printed on transfer sheets. With the glue on the back, this is the heat transfer glue on the back. This was done on the Epson F2100 direct to garment printer. Tons of videos on this um, on the internet too. So um, this would work exact that I've made actually on my YouTube channel. Watch watch uh, videos on the DTG. So this would work exactly like doing it on the Roland. It's just we're printing on this transfer sheet with our direct to garment printer. Um, then we're heat transferring it to the shirt. Just like you would a heat transfer you get from stalls. Um, that's actually how they make a lot of their stuff is with these type of um, these type of printers. Um, but yeah, you just heat transfer it, peel off the backing, it's stuck. Then you can put it in your hoop, take it to your embroidery machine, take that exact same art, use it in design shop, um, pick your um, pick your uh, your um, two points, your registration lines with your la your laser alignment tool. Then it'll make that adjustment and you should land perfect embroider or perfect uh, registration. Um, again, watch some videos on the YouTube channel and we will have more on this discussion coming up. So I hope that help an answers your question. All of this stuff, by the way, can be purchased on shopmelco.com. So if you have a direct-to-garment printer, 
and you want to get into DTF, watch the videos that I've made. Um, but you can purchase all the supplies you need uh, on our website, and you can purchase all the stuff you need for your roll, your solvent rolling printer too. Um, so great question. Garment Creator is is Diana. Garment Creator is the software that comes with the twenty one hundred. So if you're doing um, um, you design in Illustrator, you design in Photoshop, you design in Corel, however you're getting your artwork, design it, make it the way you want it, high resolution. One thing about artwork is you want 300 DPI, um, RGB, and approximately the size you're going to print it. Those are the three criteria that I do in any design that I create. Um, I always start with that. And then you're, you know you're always going to have good resolution, resolution. So I start with that. Um, then you just drag it into Garment Creator. Garment Creator is a very simple RIP program for the 2100. You drag it in, you say, how big do you want it? How much ink do you want to lay down? You press print. It's that simple. So that's what Garment Creator is. Um, what are the limitations of the solvent printer? That's a good question. Um, uh, I, I want to answer that with prefacing that every piece of equipment has its place. There's not one piece of equipment that can do everything, right? So Direct to garment isn't great on polyester. However, you can now do transfers with direct to garment. Um, solvent printers, um, if you're doing heat transfer material on garments, one of the set one of the drawbacks to that is you have to weed away the material that you don't want, much like you would weed away any vinyl application that you cut. You have to do some weeding. So that's a bit of a limitation and a bit of a setback. Um, the feel is a little bit, it's soft, it feels good, it wears well, it um, never washes out. It always lasts the life of the garment, uh, but it feels almost a little um, transfer, right? So it's it's basically vinyl. So it will not necessarily breathe like water-based ink um, with um, direct, to, direct to garment transfer prints. Um, other than that, you're limited by the width of your printer. I have a 30 incher here. If I wanted to do banners seriously, um, I would need to get into 54 inch, potentially 64 inch. I can't vehicle wrap with a 30 inch. I would need a 54 inch um, solvent printers. If you're this ink, the TR2 ink that comes with Roland's new printers um, is really, really smudge resistant, highly smudge resistant and really UV resistant, um, but uh, it will need lamination. So some printers like UV, uh, uh, UV printers don't necessarily need lamination, but they have their setback, their drawbacks too. Um, so you would need to potentially get a laminator, which is not uncommon. And frankly, any vinyl application that you're doing that's going to be held uh, in a high UV environment, vehicle wraps, big signage, um, uh, um, like uh, construction signs or city uh, uh, traffic signs, those type of things, um, they all need to be laminated anyway. So lamination is just part of the game. So that would be one setback, I guess, if you were thinking about production time. But that's just part of it. You have to laminate. So off-gassing is something else to consider. Before you laminate, you need to let your art sit um, for maybe five hours. Let all that gas escape. You can heat, you can um, increase that time. You can speed that up by adding a heater. So that, that's something that's available as well um, to speed that process up. But otherwise, super versatile. And that's one reason why we really like that. So I hope that uh, answered your question, Ignatius. Um, let's see. Hi, Mommy Cares. This is my first live. Does Melco sell DTG printers? Uh, which uh, is best for DTG or DTF? That's a great question. So thanks for joining. Um, as if you, you can watch my YouTube channels, I suggest um, you guys do my YouTube, watch my YouTube channel um, on direct to garment printing is called Pro DTG. Um, I also have one for die sublimation. I have one for roll and print cut. I do. I'm doing embroidery now. Um, but the reason uh, we sell the equipment that we do. Uh, is because one, my experience in this industry is proven to, uh, it, my experience is, is such that I have very little patience for equipment that doesn't work. Um, I know what it takes to run a shop. And if you're spending the bulk of your day trying to figure out, diagnose, problem solve, troubleshoot your printers, you're not printing and making any money and nothing makes me more frustrated. Um, so if, we, if there was a better printer on the market, that was even less maintenance and easier to run than the Epson printers, I, I would buy it. Um, but there isn't. And um, not only is Epson the most, one of the most affordable 
printers. It's also it's in this version, it's like the highest quality printer you could ask for. I've had this printer. This is serial number five or six. It's the first one in this country about five years ago um, or four years ago, the 2100. And I have done almost nothing to it. I use it very rarely. Um, even if I used it all the time, I, it's just a printer that's going to work for you. Um, the old adage with DTG is you have to run it every day or it clogs up, whiting problems, blah, 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 blah. Epson has solved all that. So, um, yes, it's perfect for DTG. It's perfect for DTF. Um, and you're looking at 15.5, I think, this month. Epson changes the price every month, so I could be off by 500 bucks. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an outstanding direct-to-garment printer. I mean... I am so busy. I have no time to come in. I need to print samples. I have no time to come in and spend six hours diagnosing and figuring out why that thing doesn't work. And you as a production person should not have to come into your shop and try to figure out why your printer is not working. And that's the same with the roller. So uh, keep, keep that in mind when buying DTG. If you find, if any of you see something that's better out there, I mean, I know this industry inside and out. If any of you see anything that's better out there that doesn't cost almost anything to maintain, runs all the time, has an outstanding warranty, super support. If you guys think, if you guys have a better option, let me know. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, too big. Yeah, I don't, um, Jared, I don't know. I mean, th there are smaller printers. So uh, BN20 is an option. Um, I don't know about DTG smaller. I wouldn't go any different than the 2100, even for big production. But um Oh, oh, sorry, you guys. Yeah, the the print. Um, right, got it. The embroidery on the back of the jacket. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. It's not not necessary. So one hooping, uh, we also found was pretty good. Um, your mama, yes. Uh, email me for suggestions or heat press and pressure settings. I'd like to uh, help you with that too. Um, I'm torn between getting a second Melco or buying a DTG. Well, that's a really good point, uh, your mama. <laughs> Thirteen twenty five. Uh, 75. If you are debating whether or not to buy a second embroidery machine or a direct to garment printer, my question to you would be what is going to make you the most money the fastest? If increasing production scalability, product, uh, production speed by getting a second embroidery machine helps you grow your business quicker, which I anticipate it would, especially if you're an embroidery um, operator now, having two machines exponentially increases production time. You're going to the, having two machines is going to triple your production output. Um, so I would, cause you're just basically going from one machine to the other. You're doing, uh, you're, you're running much faster with two machines. So personally, if you have embroidery business, I would, I would buy an embroidery. I would buy a second embroidery machine um, and then look into expanding into other applications. Cause you can get a cheap vinyl printer. Um, you can always buy transfers from stalls, um, you can uh, partner with somebody else locally who has a 2100 or who does DTG and farm out jobs to them. Let them do that um, while you're growing this embroidery business that makes a lot of sense. Um, two, three embroidery machines, you're going to be a full on fledged, like running really busy production shop. So um, that would be my recommendation. I mean, I love digital printing, but um, just to be frank with you, I mean, that 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 seems like the most logical um uh, growth investment in my, my, my uh, opinion. Um, how well is the directed garment for color facets, Diana? That's a great question. So um, most uh, every garment decoration application, especially digital, um, is going to be have an independent rating from the um, uh, S... Uh, I forgot the name. It's... <laughs> Anyway, so there's an independent, uh, oh shoot, I thought I had it. So there's an independent agency that tests washability, durability of printers applications. Um, there's, it's a five-star rating would be the highest. Epson gets five-star ratings on every, everything that they do. Um, so five out of five. So what that means is it should last the life of the garment. Um, and screen printing, as you know, can crack, peel, and not necessarily, if it's plastic, all if it's, if it's, um, uh, discharging that's a little bit different you're going to get life of the garment but yeah super washability and then same with rolling um that's not gonna those transfers are not gonna wash off wear off or we had them on our um on some of our uh like our our gear bags we had those logos on um a lot of our our fire not our structural gear but all, a lot of our other high abused apparel never a problem i mean it's it sticks it's there for life um 
Uh, Diana, yeah, you mentioned tie dye over a sublimation. So can you solid tie dye over the sub? Um, what does dye sub do to this? So you could, um, you could dye dye tie dye over sublimation. What you would experience is if the color of the print is lighter than the color of the dye sublimation, it would it would just cover it over. So or the dye, color of the tie dye, it would cover it over. So you have to keep that in mind that we're using we're using tr uh, very viscous, thin, transparenty type inks where it's really easy um, to um, to kind of see through they're very thin right so you apply enough where you get good vibrancy but if you put something over top of it you're likely going to see um, what you put over top of it and lose what you have underneath it so something to consider i would say and are you tie dyeing polyester because you can only really dye sublimate effectively on polyester um so think think about those two things um you can use an example if i had a light blue t-shirt or a light pink t-shirt i couldn't dye sublimate a nice bright yellow on that it would just not look yellow at all it would if i did it on blue it'd probably look greenish right um yellow and blue makes green because it's so thin and so viscous but if you put black ink or dark blue or dark red that would be more visible on the garment um so i hope that answers your question there um, yeah, that's my website, Pro DTG. That's correct. Um, the Oki Pro, Jared uh, Dahlia Sinfolk. Um, uh, Oki Pro 9541. So we don't sell Oki, and the reason we don't is because the equipment that we have here um, I find to be um, far more useful, reliable, um, and quality and easy to app apply in a production setting. Granted, the Oki is far more expen uh, less expensive than a lot of this stuff. These are in the $15,000 range. So it's an investment. But in my opinion, um, I think the Oki does have its place. Um, I think it does make sense for a lot of operators. Um, we had one once at one of my shops. This was eight years ago. Um, I don't, we did not use it, frankly, that often, but we had a lot of other equipment. Um, the feedback that I've gotten from customers out in the field is they like it, but it's expensive to operate and you, and it, 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 it kind of, you run into some problems. So, um, I wish I had more of an answer for you. Um, just because I don't carry it and suggest the Melco carries, it doesn't mean that it's not good. Um, do your research on the forums though. Get, get, try to get a little bit more feedback. My recommendation would be if you can, if you can justify the investment, go DTG 2100 or roll and solvent print cut. I know it's more expensive considerably, um, but I think you're gonna find, you're gonna use these machines a lot more. They're gonna bring you a lot more revenue. Um, they're gonna open up a lot more potentials. Um, they're not as limited as uh, the Oki, um, and they're not as expensive to operate as the Oki. So that's that's my thought on that. Um, Ramona, yeah, hi Ramona, <laughs> your mama. That's super funny. Um, good. I'm glad you're uh, finding this information helpful. Um, yeah, Clarita, that does make sense, uh, getting the additional embroidery machine. So white toner printers, Nick, um, that question we, we just kind of addressed with the uh, with the Oki Pro. So, um, you know, there are white DTF printers out there. So let's just talk briefly about the history of DTG. direct -to garment initially was essentially Roland or, or Epson-based uh, solvent paper printers that were converted um, into a DISA or directed garment uh, um, body, um, new software to allow to run water-based ink through a solvent printhead to print directly on the fabric. That had essentially been the technology uh, for 10, 12 years before the Epson 2100 came out or the 2000 came out. So the, the problem with that though, is when you're running water based ink through a solvent made printhead, the adhesives, the white ink, the nozzle size, there's a number of factors the, 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 um, the makeup of the white ink that none of that was really made for that type of printhead. And you run into catastrophic clogging problems. Um, that is historically the problem with DTG. And frankly, everything outside of the 2100 is subject to those problems. So, my recommendation is 
don't buy a printer that has been converted, modified, changed from its original intent to use as a white ink or a different type of application printer. Um, use the printhead that is purpose built for the ink system that is in it. The 2100 is going to work great as a direct to garment printer. It's going to also work great as a, a direct to film printer. I would not buy a modern direct to film printer. Um, well, there maybe are a few exceptions out there, but I think they're really expensive um, and I haven't had a chance to test them. And the reason I wouldn't is because they are like early direct to garment printers where they're using direct to garment ink and they're trying to force that through a print head that was designed for another application. So it may be really enticing to get a $3,500 DTF printer out there, um, but you're gonna spend, that $3,500 is gonna be lost quick in, in lost production time make up and you're going to be spending a lot of time troubleshooting diagnosing fixing problems get yourself a direct to garment printer that works perfect as direct to garment printing use it for that application also use it as a dtf printer direct to film printer so um those white toner printers um I, again i think it's kind of a similar application but the problem is that, that paper is expensive there's a guy the print life on youtube um, the Print Life does a really good video on um, kind of uh, um, the toner issue and some of the things that people are experiencing. Um, and they are cheap. It's really enticing and exciting to maybe look at something that's inexpensive like that. But I want to tell you from a person who ran uh, plenty of production shops, I, I know a lot of people in this industry. I know a lot of manufacturers in this industry. And a lot of people create product to prey on people that don't know the details. They assume that this printer is going to do everything that it says. It's going to work for me. Um, but the reality is a lot of these manufacturers out here are preying on people who don't know. And one thing that's unique about our business is a lot of people are coming online every single day thinking that they can just jump into this. Oh, I can make a few shirts. Oh, they, my uh, basketball, my, my church group wanted, uh, wanted 12 shirts for our choir. Huh? Why, why would I pay someone else to do that? I can make that. I'll just get a little cutter. I can do blah, blah, blah. And it escalates from there. I think we all have a very similar story, um, but if you don't know the ins and outs, you have to find someone that you can trust um, that can give you information um, that you can trust. And uh, it's, unfortunately, it's, it takes a lot of time to do the research. Um, takes a lot of time to really kind of analyze a lot of these products out there. Don't be don't be sold by gimmicky type stuff. And there's a lot of it out there. A lot of it out there. Stick with the big brands that you know work well, that have the support, that have the warranties, that are affordable to operate. Um, that give you the high quality results you're looking for. I'm telling you, you would be much better off spending fifteen thousand than three thousand dollars, and a, a ton of headaches. It's going to be a mistake. It often is. So um, something to consider. <laughs> I know from experience, and and I, I hear about it all the time in this industry. So one thing that I would say is the reason I created the, the this digital department the way I have is because I believe we're selling equipment that is going to work for you. And, and it makes my job, frankly, considerably easier because I don't get calls from people pissed off at me that we sold them garbage. So <laughs> makes my life easier, makes your life easier, makes everybody make money. And that's the idea. Um, so, yeah, it is the 2100 is white toner, but again, it's purpose built. So it's, it's water based ink built specifically for this print head, for this print engine, for this application. Um, watch some of my videos on the Pro DTG channel. You'll see that. Um, it, hands down, I mean, this thing is, this thing is is the way to do. It. Yeah, paper is expensive, Jared. That's that's part of the, the problem. Yes, fifteen thousand dollars for a, a twenty one hundred. That is correct. Right now, I believe. Yeah. Um, Diane, I have watched other YouTube videos that show printing the die sub ink into lower cost Epson printers. What do you think about this? Um, I, I again, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. Epson is now making low cost die sub printers. So get the fifty, get the five seventy, or get the F one seventy. Um, they, they have it, it's warranted. Um, it, it's easy. It's, it's a, it affordable. Um, and it's Epson. So you get the support, you get the warranty, you get everything you need. Um, and it couldn't be easier. So, um, I would not, I would not mess with Sawgrass. Sorry, Sawgrass, if you're watching, which I doubt you are, I would not mess with Sawgrass. I wouldn't mess with any, uh, repurposed type printers. You just don't have to anymore. Early on you did because there wasn't a lot of options. But now uh, there's a number of really high quality manufacturers out there that are putting out really high quality product that is affordable, that will give us what we need reliably. And that's key. It's, it's reliable. So I hope that helps. 
Yeah, fluorescent inks for DTG. Um, you know, I hope that it comes. I really do. Uh, I'm not seeing that really likely anytime soon, though. Epson may have a few um, tricks up their sleeve cards up their sleeve for the uh, for a new release in the future. But uh, don't quote me and don't count on that being the case. I don't know. Um, fluorescent really only on the printing side is on dye sublimation, um, and that's on the from Epson. So we sold a couple of dye sub printers with fluorescent ink to a couple printer people, a couple of our customers who do really large uh, print runs. Uh, they do their own cut and sew. It's fantastic, by the way. It's really not that hard to get into, um, and they love it. So if you need if you need fluorescent with DTG, Nick, my recommendation would be cut vinyl, cut um, cut fluorescent vinyl. Design your design where you can easily add those fluorescent elements so for example if it's big numbers on the back of a uh, jacket or something like that you can do uh, dtg um, or dtf transfer you can do transfers on here that gets the bulk of the number but if say the outline needs to be fluorescent cut vinyl and then just lay it over top and heat transfer it over top so that would be an example of mixed media um, and that would be my solution for that currently um, there really just is not a lot of digital applications that allow for um, for neon except for that dot sub. Uh, clear to you got it. Oh, good. Well, I hope I made I hope I made that clear. So, a um, couple things to end on. We have nine minutes left. Um, mixed media is very simple with these two applications. Um, you can use direct to garment. You can use um, or three applications. Sorry, you can use direct to garment. You can use roll and print cut. You can use uh, direct. Um, uh, dye sublimation. And the reason that that works so well with the Melco embroidery system is because in our design shop software, we have that laser alignment tool that is built into the MT16X, I think going back to um, Amaya's, which we talked a little bit about yesterday. It's built into this system where you don't have to worry about hooping it just right. You don't have to worry about adding elements or, or, or um, um, making sure that the design is not stretched a little bit after you hoop it. All this is recalibrated in, um, in the design shop software and it allows for easy, easy, quick uh, registration and, and perfect alignment with the roller, uh, with the mt 16 x So super fun. Yes, you can print, um, oh, print vinyl on the Oki. Um, I, I don't think so. Um, I think that's its own transfer, transfer sheet. Um, they have a, I think they call it a, um, a pre-treat coated sheet, if I'm not wrong, or some sort of transfer. It's basically a sheet of paper. It's clearish. Um, and no, their ink only sticks to that. I don't think it'll stick to vinyl. Um, one thing to note, um, this, this vinyl on the Roland here um, for the heat transfer material, it, it's self-healing. So as a needle punctures it, that, that vinyl will actually close that needle gap. So you won't see big needle gaps in your vinyl. A lot of people had had issues with that in the past, but this rolling vinyl is so good now that you don't really see that. Also with dye sub, um, you don't really see any splitting of the uh, of the of the um, the the twill uh, with the needle puncture either. So um, you get a really high quality result. You don't have to worry about little things like that. Um, what is my favorite machine? <laughs> um, I love that Roland. I do. I swear. I, I love that thing. Um, I use it all the time. Um, I, I was, I'm, I'm really big in, into the 2100 too, uh, because I love doing big hoodies. Um, I've, I've did some videos of making hoodies for me and my buddies. Um, I love the, the softness and the feel on apparel that the, the 2100 gives. I'm kind of moving away from making apparel so much is I'm really enjoying now making some of the other things like stickers, banners, vehicle wrap type stuff of it, just adhesive things are fun for me now. So I'm really liking that. Um, what I like about uh, dye sublimation is how easy it is to make mugs and really hard goods. So um, I made tiles for my, um, my skate park in my backyard. I, I made custom tiles for the back of it. I made a little video on how you can make a backsplash. I mean, that's super fun. I like these custom mugs. So I, that's, that's an unfair question. But right now, personally, I'm loving the, the Roland, um, but I use all of them. I mean, all the time. Um, and print, um, and print meal as well. I'm not sure what that means. Sorry, Jared. Um, what would you use to print on marine vinyl? So marine vinyl, 
any vinyl that you're going to use fine but for marine vinyl uh you have to laminate you have to laminate because it's just so exposed to the sun so marine vinyl it's going to work well i I know i know my buddy my brothers in the shipping industry they use vinyl all the time a lot of their vinyl is colored vinyl they don't and they use that vinyl instead of painting now um it holds up really well one thing i say is they remove that vinyl almost biannually or annually and replace it because the uv just beats this stuff up so go to 3m go to avery um, you can print on all that vinyl. It's fine, but you have to laminate it. We sell GFP laminators. If you need more information on that, please send me an email. I'll give you more details on that. Um, how long can the Roland sit between prints and not risk issues with the print head? Great question, Samantha. Um, oh, is our podcast, is our, I guess we're almost done. Uh, but the answer to that is, I've let mine sit for two weeks now before I've done I've done nothing because I run out of cleaning solution, but it it hasn't been a problem and I, I don't think it will be. So, um, oh, upholstery of material. Okay, um, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how you would apply to that. So, um, I don't know. I'm not sure about upholstery material. I haven't really messed with that. I mean, you can broider on it. I know that. You know that. Uh, but I, I'm not sure about cutting it or or messing with that so much. So, sorry, I don't have more of an answer for you there. Um, well, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all. Um, we had a good turnout. Uh, this is exciting. I know we're going to be doing more in the future. Um, and um, this is this is always fun. So, if you have anything specifically you would like to, for me to address. In future videos, future live Q and A's, um, you have my email. It's in the comments here. Feel free to drop me an email. I'd be um, I'd be happy to um, happy to help. Uh, thanks, Diana. That's very kind. Yes, I will be in Anaconda, um, and uh, if I'm in your area, I will definitely stop by and see your shop. I would love to do that. I love uh, stopping in and making customer visits. Um, uh, what was your question, Ignatius? Did I miss something? Oh, oh, hoping for another session. Great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, again, send me um, send me uh, recommendations on stuff you'd like to see and do. We could do actually live production type stuff too in the future. So um, we weren't anticipating that, but we'll be very happy to do that in the future. So if you guys have that's something you want to see, I think that'd be a great idea, actually. Um, for any Melco people watching, let's try to do live production runs. Um, really help. Like, hey, we're running a hat run of 30 shirts. Hey, we're running some mixed media. Hey, we're going to do a, a roll and print cut job while I'm doing some dye sublimation or while I'm doing some director garment or all of it. So, yeah, that would be super fun. Great. Well, I'm glad you guys have found this info. Those very kind words. Uh, find this info helpful. That was very kind. Um, makes me feel good to know that we're helping you. So um, thanks again, everybody. Um, appreciate you. Chancho, you ready to go to the park? He's ready. See you guys. See you next time.